We begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord says, prepare the way of the Lord. We, we thank you, Lord. Lord. The Lord says, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming. We, we adore you, Lord. Lord. The Lord says, I, the Lord, do not change, therefore you are not consumed. We praise you, O Lord. The Lord who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. We worship you, O Lord. as God's new creation in Christ, we confess our, our sins to God and one another. We confess to you, O Lord, that we are captive to sin in thought, word, and deed. We have not borne fruit worthy of repentance. We have sinned against you and our neighbors. And we are your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. <clears throat> Let us pray. 
O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Testament reading from Malachi 3, 1 through 7b. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as, it, as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Speak to God. God. You have brought us out to a place of abundance. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God. How awesome are these! So great is your power that your enemies comprehend to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his peace for the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him. Who rules by his might forever? Whose eyes can be washed on the nations? Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O oh peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip? For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You let your burden on our back. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You have brought us out to a place of abundance. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, he bless you. The reading of the epistle from Philippians 1, 2 through 11. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. 
For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Prepare the way of the Lord. And make his path straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor over Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Iteria and Tectronus, and Lysin Lys Licinius, Tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priestess, priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Ze Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaim, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. That is, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, by him You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee the, the, from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds ask him, what, what then shall we do? And he answered them, Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also come, came to be baptized and said to him, Teachers, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect, more, more, collect no more than you are authorized to do. Soldiers asked him, And we, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not exhort money for, from anyone by threats or false accusa accusations, and be content with your wages. As the people were in ex expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been, been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, and he locked up John in prison. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated as we sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for today's message is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 15th chapter, verses 4 through 13. I read just the first and the last verse once again. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the church, we may have hope. And may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So our text, my dear friends in Christ, on this second Sunday in Advent, we move one step closer to the threshold of the stable where our Savior will soon be born anew in our hearts. Advent is a season of repentance. It is a time when we examine our lives in order to expose all those sins and shortcomings that stand between us and the manger where our Savior is to be laid. It's a time to rid our lives of all the garbage in order that we would come to the manger with hearts that are thoroughly ready to sing his praises and joy and to receive every blessing that he would pour out upon us in peace. It would indeed be wonderful if we could come to Christmas Eve this year with every sin that keeps nagging at us conquered, every problem that weighs us down totally resolved, Every difficulty that bogs down our hearts removed or taken away. If we are realistic, though, we know that this is not necessarily going to happen. The problems, difficulties, sorrows, and nagging sins that may be with us this morning still come with us after Christmas has passed. And yet on Christmas Eve, we'll all join in singing, The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. In a powerful way, and in spite of our failing, our hopes and fears really are met in the Lord Jesus Christ at his birth. This knowledge leads us to what is called Christian hope. The belief that things can become something new, even though that hasn't happened yet. It sounds strange because in the minds of most people, hoping is really nothing more than wishing, and wishing is a waste of time. Ever since we've been old enough to know that there is no, well, I don't want to say the word, and I even don't want to spell it out because I think the children are smart enough to know what I'm referring to. We've all known that the wishes don't come true. So hoping, like wishing, is seen as futile and silly. But our brother St. Paul in the epistle this morning calls upon us to hope. Does that mean we should live in a dream world, wishfully wishing that things were not the way that they really are? Is that what faith is all about? No, to hope in Bible language is not wishing at all, but it's confidently expecting. So when Paul today calls on the Roman Christians and us to hope in God, that means that we are called to live before him in confidence and in a confident expectation. The Christians at Rome, we can be sure, believed the good news of God's love for them just as we do this day. But things were not automatically perfect for them. In the preceding chapter, St. Paul has addressed the problem that these people were having. They were in disputes between Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. And it was about diets. What was proper to eat and what was not proper to eat. And it was about days, which day was proper day to worship and 
which then wasn't the proper day of worship. St. Paul did an interesting thing about these arguing factions. He wrote to them about dropping their differences and, in his words, with one voice, praising God. Then he told them to accept one another, it happens in verse 7, and to remember that God has been faithful to them. He reminded them of God's faithfulness by citing various prophecies concerning the salvation of Jews and Gentiles alike. You will find all those in verses 9 through 12. Now that's not so unusual. What is unusual is that he frames this plea for unity and the resolution of their problems with Christian hope in verse 4 and verse 13 that I read to you. He said, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. And he ended the section with these words. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may, be, you may abound in hope. St. Paul spoke to them as though the problem was resolved already, and that they could praise God with one voice and could accept each other. He was writing with and about Christian hope, not the kind of hope expressed in the words like, I hope you Christians at Rome can get along with each other, but rather in words like this, live like God has already resolved the turmoil. That's Christian hope. That is Advent hope. When your life is turned upside down, what do you expect from God? Not what do you wish would happen. But what do you confidently expect God to do? If we are very honest, we'd have to say, well, not much, really. We ask him to do a lot. We pray, we pray, but it's not often that we get what we ask for. So we're pretty well given up on that, too. We don't expect much from God. To expect nothing from God is to get nothing. And if we get nothing from God, we are left only with death in our lives. Our lack of hope, our failure to expect blessing from God, is a sign and a symptom of our sin. The tragic consequence of our common rebellion against God. So it is the will of God for us again today that we move to hope. He wants us to be on tiptoes with expectation for his presence in our lives. As a child, he really expects the coming of Christmas. As the people of the Old Testament expected the Savior to come, an expectation that would be fulfilled hundreds of years later, God gave his promises. Looking back, the Roman Christians are reminded to see what we, too, can see now. That God carried out his plan and his promise through all those years, and how the birth of Jesus Christ is a sign of God's faithfulness in action. We then, like the Christians in Rome, are asked to remember also that the people who received the original promise could not see what we see. All they could do was hope, to believe the promises and to live as though they had already come to pass, even though they had not. Perhaps you too can look back upon circumstances in your own life when things were terribly dark and grim. Everything seemed to be hopeless. All that you could do was to cling to the promises of God. You could not read the future. But you could read the faithfulness of God throughout all of those circumstances. And you can praise God for having led you through that time into the present. 
Likewise, your problems, your sins, your weaknesses, your sorrows. They may be with you yet this Christmas Eve when you stand at the manger. They may continue to plague you until next Christmas. That does not mean that you cannot celebrate Christmas in all of its joy. Not if you have Christian hope. Hope that expects God's mercy and faithfulness, that knows he forgives your sins at the cost of the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. He does not hold your sin against you. He never will. Hope that expects God to keep his promises as awesome as they seem, it's Christian hope. Promises of protection, that your faith will be there in the face of disaster. That kind of promise. The promise that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, you shall not be overwhelmed. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. That's the promise in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. Promises that guide us on the twisted road through life. And a promise like, and I will lead the blind in a way that they will know not. And paths that they have not yet known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These things I will do, and I will not forsake them. In the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. And even the promises of heaven that he gives us, I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to my set, myself, that where I am you may be also. From the 14th chapter of St. John. That's what you can expect, people of God, when you trust in God's power and live in hope. When you live as though the tensions in your life, in your family, in your marriages, or at your work will all be overcome. There is no more need for gloomy despair or gloomy scrambling through life as people who have to make their own way, who expect nothing from God. We have seen Christ in the manger of the Holy Scriptures. We know that God is faithful. And with all joy and peace in believing in his faithfulness, we abound in hope. That is a hope that makes no situation hopeless. We can hope even through our tears because the hopes and fears of all the years really are met in Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear friends, May you celebrate this Christmas as an event that symbolizes more than just wishful thinking. But as a time that has meaning for today and every day, and even into the future. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as he continues to speak to us through the Word of God, you may abound in hope. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please stand and read. Confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, God of light, very God of very God, begotten not made. Being the 
substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in the world to judge the world, the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in the one who will be Christian and have a church. I acknowledge the one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds for Christ's coming, we turn to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> o wisdom from on high, guide your church throughout the world to repent to turn each day to you, confessing our sins and being restored to you to bear fruit of the Spirit. Move the leaders, pastors, teachers, and all the people of our synod to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. We pray. Hear us, coming Lord. O desire of nations, bless the leaders of nations, our president and Congress, our governors and local leaders. Move all leaders to cease envy and boastfulness, injustice and corruption. Guide our leaders to be honorable people who do not neglect the poor and who strive towards the flourishing of all human beings. Bless those who served in our armed forces and lift up refugees from all victims of war. Bring peace between us and our enemies and let your peace reign over this broken world, we pray. Yes, Heavenly Lord. O day spring from on high, come to the aid of all who are in need as you humbly entered this world as a vulnerable baby, help all of us who enter the humble lives of those who are sick, facing surgery or dying, to offer comfort and hope. Bring healing according to your will and peace to those who endure sufferings. Thank you for the work of doctors, nurses, and other medical professions who work towards healing and restoration of wholeness. Guide scientists searching for cures for diseases that bring suffering to the world, that their work might lead to healing for, for many, we pray. Hear us, Hear us coming, Lord. Lord. O key of David, let your joy, forgiveness, and peace flow freely in and among the families of this congregation. Empower parents and grandparents to love their children and children to love their parents. Watch over all who travel and comfort families who are separated by many miles. Guide families to be places where your love is demonstrated to strangers as well as to friends. We pray. Hear us, Holy Lord. O Lord of might, empower us to hear the words of John the Baptist afresh today. Lead us to repent to those of those things that hinder our trust in you. And fill us by your Holy Spirit to bear much fruit, we pray. Yes, Lord. O Emmanuel, you deliver your people even from the grips of death. Comfort those who mourn and use us to express the hope that comes from entrusting in you. Bring us to be with them in the great days to come. And until the day, give us peace to endure life difficulties, while also abiding in your love, we pray. Yes, Lord. Lord, this morning we, we want to pray especially for Phyllis Vickers for healing and all the rest of the people that we know that we name on our hearts. You, O oh Lord, know the thoughts of our hearts and hear those prayers that come to you in sighs too deep for words. All our prayers we entrust to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a, a, a offering plate in the back and on the side if you want to worship Jesus and God with that. We continue with the offertory. <coughs> Thank you. 
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose coming John the Baptist proclaimed in the wilderness, by who, and by whose death and resurrection calls us to repent, turning again and again to the font of his mercy, so that our lives bear, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and to confess your holy cross and your passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for your forgiveness. Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may strengthen you into life everlasting. Go in peace knowing that your sins are forgiven. For you are free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and take a moment as we reflect upon the grace of our Lord. Share the subject. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. May the Lord our God, may he bless you, may he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.
So going to her sheets, we need 30 cans of chili beans, 20 cans of tomatoes, and we don't need any packages of seasoning. The tomatoes are full, too. We don't need any tomatoes. We don't need any tomatoes? Okay. Well, like I said. I know. That was this one. Yeah. <laughs> so these numbers change quickly. <laughs> um, also, we need more towels for the American ministry, Christmas or rental kitchen towels or you know, something similar. Also, on this table over here, if you don't get the weekly email, because I've been including the I, this past Wednesday, I included Wednesday's um, Advent devotional that you can see on Christ our Redeemer Lutheran Church Hartzell YouTube page. If you're not already subscribed on it, you can go to head and subscribe, and it's really simple, it doesn't cost you anything. And you can follow David and Frankie and Jackie and Becky, as they do the devotional for that Sunday, or that Wednesday. It's oh, huh? It's Cindy. And who? Cindy Jules. Oh, Cindy. I'm sorry, Cindy. I didn't realize you were part of it. I'm <laughs> sorry. Also, there, if you don't get it, there are copies of all four weeks. If there's not enough for the third and fourth Wednesdays, they will be out there next Sunday. Okay? And, oh, I didn't correct something here. Um. Christmas Eve service is at 6 p.m. on the 24th, and there's some um, calendars in the hallway. If you weren't here last week and you don't get our emails, um, you have a calendar. There's some calendars in the hallway. Thank you. Anyone? Else? I haven't thought of this one. I haven't heard one. <laughs> You know, we had the, the, the birthdays for people, and we sing happy birthday. So I thought, why don't we, the first thing in my pray for these people? Because they're kind of mm -hmm. So let's pray. Almighty God, <clears throat> you are so wonderful in, in all your ways. And you know our every needs, for you brought us into the world. And we ask God that these that have birthdays this month, that you bless any, each and every one of them. That you bless Timothy, David, and Ellen, and, and Jackson, and Todd. That they have a remarkably wonderful birthday. But then in all that, they realize the greatest gift. The greatest gift is you. Bless them with your presence that day. May they see you everywhere they look. May they feel the warmth of your presence. And the joy of your heart. But most of all, your love your mercy and your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I got one more thing, I'm sorry. Um, Paul prayed for my mom, Phyllis Vickers, today. She's 92. She had, my dad took her to the emergency room on Monday. They found out she had a ruptured appendix. Um, but by yesterday, and then they're draining it because they don't really, because of her age, want to go in and take it out. But yesterday, my dad posted on Facebook that she doesn't see all the all the prayers and stuff that people are sending through Facebook to her. So if you're an interest, she wants to see cards. So I thought it would be great if anybody wants to send her a card. You can click down there. You go to the same church I go to. I you know, and I can give you the address, and I'll probably have to email it to you because I don't think I have it on me. And that would be great that she can get lots of cards from people she doesn't even know that know that they're praying for her. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.